is way down. someone that you would like to add to the prayers you will have the choice to go ahead and fill that out you can mark for them to be in the bulletin or you can go ahead and mark them to be in our private prayer group that group meets at 6 30 every monday evening and we are praying for a whole list of uh, people as well so that is an opportunity to do that our april mission will go ahead and be passing the buckets um, after announcements, anything that goes into this bucket will be for our April mission, just so you know, which is Heritage Christian School. That is Pastor uh, Moses, who was here uh, a few months ago. Um, that's Pastor Moses uh, from Rwanda. Uh, Whitney had stayed with him when she was in Africa, and she spent some time in Rwanda. He came here, uh, spoke, and we are helping build a fence at his school and um, his church as well. We are just part of a team of churches trying to gather together. They have a totally different way of building churches there. I mean, offenses, I should say, in those areas. But um, I'll try to ha actually have a picture for you guys next week. He actually did send me one um, just recently so we can see the progress of what they're actually doing right now. Also, we have Hesed House. This is our every other month we serve at Hesed House. Um, we want to thank everyone that signed up. We have all our food items that are needed are taken care of. Just remember, um, next Sunday, 
that we do have our packing that will be happening. And then we have a team already that it will be going at a spouse and serving. So after church and life Sunday, if you have a few minutes, um, we pack about 100 lunches um, and we put it all together. So if you would like to do that, you can join us next Sunday as well. On this Thursday, like I said, a lot of things happen. This Thursday is our 5Bs um, spring barbecue. That will be from 4 to uh, 6.30 p.m. We actually have, again, everyone kind of signed up and all our help is needed. So thank you for everyone that has uh, taken care of that. But we do need <clears throat> a couple more bakers. Uh, Julie, I think we said we have three more bags of cookies. If you would like to go ahead and bake, uh, talk with Julie in the back. <clears throat> and uh, that'd be a great way. We got a lot of them out, but we have three more bags. So talk with Julie about that. Just hook them up on like Wednesday or Thursday, and then we will be selling them um, as part of our dinners as well. We have a paint day coming up. I don't know if you happen to notice, but we had a group of people here yesterday doing a lot of work. We actually pulled out some old bushes that their lifespan had kind of outgrown them. Got uh, uh, They were getting a little thin, I guess you would say, but really wide and everything else. So we took about, I don't know, a good six or so bushes completely out. We trimmed a whole bunch of different things. Bruce is like Edward uh, Scissor's hand over there shaping everything. <laughs> yeah, he does haircuts too. And it's really tight, you can see. You don't even see some hair on Bruce's hair, he does it so good. <laughs> he did have to see that was that was going back at you for for when you made the comment. You know, so we're working hard bending over and what do I hear Bruce say? Oh look at that, it's easier for uh, Joe. He's closer to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> See, so we can all go back and forth. But um, we do have a paint day that's coming up May 18th. Guys, we're going to be looking for a lot of people to help out on this. We're going to have to be scraping and then painting. That We have the whole uh, fellowship area there is all wood. And this side of the building is wood as well. We're going to first tackle this section over here. Um, but we're going to be painting and scraping because we have a lot of exposed wood, so we need to get that covered. So if you can please uh, consider looking at May 18th to get that on your schedule, um, that would be great as well. Graduation Sunday is coming up. That'll be here before we know it, May 19th. We want to celebrate all our graduates. Um, our, wife, our website has a link that allows me to enter your information and a picture. If you prefer, you can go ahead and drop that off in the office as well on Tuesday and Thursday from 8.30 to 12.30. John is usually here. Also in the fellowship area on the uh, desk. And, and there, there is a form. You can actually just go ahead and fill that out as well. We have some birthdays coming up this week. Uh, Stephen Ogle, Lee Thompson, Paige Guerrero, and Dennis Ryder. Oh. Look at him shake his head. <laughs> He's not here. He's not here. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry. Well, then, in spirit, we're going to sing to Dennis, who's not here, hey, in the front row, right there. And maybe we need to sing for someone who wasn't here. No. Yes. We, don't, we don't live in the past. We <laughs> <laughs> He saved a special song for you. Oh, man, I'm sure it's not happy birthday. <laughs> so let's sing happy birthday. and updated, to be honest. We have quite a bit of things that are kind of missing still, so that would be awesome. Yes? I just want to throw one more thing out of the calendar. Um, I didn't get a chance to email out there. But May 5th, we're going to do a Mother's Day event, and we're about to call our Sunday school. So 
So anybody who's in the class or other leader is all the way to the street goal standard and get to the end. So if you want to bring in a little more and then we'll close the day. Great. So May 5th, Mother's Day, um, we're doing a Mother's Day event for anyone that is a mother or a mother figure. I mean, a lot of us, you know, in different ways are helping raise. It takes a community, as we say, to raise a uh, family. So do you have something? Or not? I thought I saw it. Any other hands? That'd be good. All right. With that being said, let's rise and pass the peace this morning. <laughs>
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He spread a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Let us join together in our opening prayer. All praise be unto you, O God, great shepherd of the sheep. You gather your people as lambs to you. You enfold them with your embracing love. You refresh us like a stream flowing freely with living waters. You nourish us like a host whose table is heavy laden. We gather to hear your refreshing word of promise and direction to honor your name as our guardian and hope. Amen. You may be seated. I invite Jamie to come forward for our reading this morning.
And you can keep them closed the whole time. Wait, can I get jingle bells? Okay, what is it? Bells. Jingle bells. Jingle bells. Jingle bells. Those are pretty good. Okay, so you got that one. Alright, ready? Close your eyes. That was easy. We're different now. Don't you see you cheating on there? Get over there. Close your eyes. No cheating. Ready? Listen. Zipper. Okay. And I, was, I don't think that was in the bag. I think that was in the bag. I saw you wearing a zipper. Oh, okay. Or, or you're looking for your face. No, it's not. <laughs> All right. Ready? Close your eyes. Another one. Ready? Tell me what this is. Scissors. scissors. Oh my god, that's scissors. Okay. We're pretty good. All right. This one's going to be a little harder. This is the hardest one I got for you. Close your eyes. Don't be done. Don't be peeking. Close your eyes. Oh, look at your back. 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 Uh huh. I think you, did you guys catch that? How many oh you guys? Oh my gosh, it's a chip bag. We literally just said that. Yes, it is a chip bag. I can't believe you had to eat the whole thing in one day. Maybe. <laughs> Are you joking? You <laughs> have to see the message. Are you joking? <laughs> All right, let me put these away, and then I'll get back to my point today. Wait, did you actually buy those stuff at Target, or did you just sneak them around your house? Probably. I just, I didn't buy both. Yeah, he bought probably it. Probably both, there you go. He bought no, it. I, I had different things. Okay, so, so you recognize those sounds because you've heard them before. How about voices? You probably could recognize maybe a close friend's voice, maybe a teacher's voice, Maybe your grandparents' voice. I'm sure you can definitely recognize your parents' voice, right? Yeah, With your eyes shut. Them, so. Yeah? It's easy. It's easy? Well, it's then sometimes, why is it that we don't listen to them when they hit them? Oh, that wasn't on there. <laughs> <laughs> Just sometimes as a parent, it comes out. Yeah? Do you know your dad's voice? Yeah? Well, you know that. Do you know what's amazing? That's when a baby is born, before they can really think about things and do things, they can recognize their parent's voice. They knew it because they would see them hear, they would hear their parent's voice when they were in their mom's tummy. That's how they can actually hear it. So they have now said to go ahead and talk to your baby as it's in the mom's belly. It's because the baby can actually hear the whole time. Now, we're not going to get too difficult with questions. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not a question. Okay, yes. So, what, my friend, she draws, and when I go, when I call her name, she goes, Oh, see, she knows your voice right away. No, I hear it, she hears it. <laughs> yes. Alright, you guys think about something. How you think you can hear, you want to get, you got something there? 
All right, what do you got?
his life for the sheep. He shared how a hired hand will run when he sees a wolf coming because they don't belong to him. He runs because he is only working for the money and does not care about the sheep. <clears throat> now just in this statement alone, we hear a profound assurance of the shepherd's love for his flock. And that flock that I'm talking about is us. He lays down his life for us, his sheep. He knows us, and we know him. He is not a distant observer, but a protector, a loving guide, and a selfless savior. Now in this reading, we hear Jesus' love for us, his willingness to lay his life down for us. This is no ordinary shepherd that I'm talking about. An ordinary shepherd might be the one that would flee at the first sign of danger, leaving the flock to fend for themselves. No, this is the good shepherd, Jesus, who we are talking about. He values each sheep so much that he would give his own life and protect each and every one of us. Now this act of laying down his life is not an unwilling obligation, but a willing sacrifice. It's a testament of how much love he has, again, for each and every one of us. He didn't just risk his life, he gave his life. This is the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate expression of love. Now, with this kind of love and sacrifice that he has shown us, we are called to respond. We are called to recognize the sacrifice for each and every one of us, to understand his love, to appreciate what it was that he did. Do you truly realize the depth of his love and the sacrifice that he did for you. I want you to consider something today. 
The shepherd's sacrifice is not just about the act of laying down his life. It's also about the way he lived his life. He lived a life of service. Jesus was always putting the needs of his sheep before his own. He cared for them. He guided them, protected them, and he loved them. His life was a living sacrifice, a constant offering of love and service. Have you ever considered that? We are called to live like Jesus. He gave us a model to follow when he walked this earth. We are called to live our lives as a living sacrifice, always ready to serve others, always ready to put their needs before our own. Think about that. That's, that's a challenge if, you're, if we're going to be real, isn't it? I mean, that sounds more like a life living for others and not for ourselves. And I'm going to be real with you. I don't think that's the world we see so often nowadays. It seems like we're more in a world that it's about me. What am I going to get out of the situation? But what Jesus is teaching us here is that we are supposed to be different. We are supposed to live a different type of life. That was the model that he showed each one of us. We are called to follow him on our journey, to live like he lived. So there's that challenging question for you today. How are you doing on your journey? Because we're all on our own journeys, all at different uh, stages. How are you doing on your journey? My brothers and sisters, we are called to love as we have been loved. To serve as we have been served. This is the way of the Good Shepherd, the way of love and service. But there's more. It's like an advertisement. But there's more for you. The shepherd's sacrifice is not just about his death or even his life. It's also about his resurrection. He laid down his life, but he also took it up again. He died, but he also rose again. His sacrifice was not the end, but the beginning. It was not a defeat. It was actually a victory. It was not a loss, but a gain. I think you understand where I'm going with that. We are called to live in the light of the resurrection, to live with the hope of victory, to live with the joy of new life. We are called to see every sacrifice as a step towards victory. Every loss is a gain, every death as a birth. Now let's not for, uh, forget the context of the shepherd's sacrifice. He didn't lay down his life for a flock of perfect, obedient sheep. I want you to hear that again. He didn't lay down his life for a flock of perfect, obedient sheep. Jesus himself, he laid down his life for a flock of wayward, <laughs> stubborn, and often disobedient sheep. He loved them not because they were lovable, but because he is love. He served them not because they deserved it, but because he is service. In our reading, we find the shepherd's selflessness for the sheep. The first thing we see is the shepherd's intimate knowledge of his sheep. Jesus says, I know my own sheep and they know me. Now this is a deep, intimate, personal knowledge about each of us. Jesus knows his sheep. He knows me. He knows my thoughts. And guess what? He knows you. He knows you personally. He knows our strengths. He also knows our weaknesses. He knows our joys. He also knows our sorrows. Understand this. He knows our past, our present, and he also knows our future. And guess what else? The sheep, remember that is us. We know our shepherd. 
We recognize his voice. We follow his lead. We trust his guidance. This is a relationship of mutual knowledge, mutual trust, and mutual love. Now another thing we see is the shepherd's commitment to his sheep. Jesus says, so I sacrifice my life for the sheep. This is not an unwilling obligation. This is a willing sacrifice. The shepherd doesn't just risk his life for the sheep. He gives his life for the sheep. He doesn't just protect the sheep from danger. He shields the sheep with his own body. He doesn't just guide the sheep to green pastures. He leads the sheep through the valley of the shadow of death. This is a commitment of self-sacrifice, self-giving, and self-emptying love. Now we can also pick up on the shepherd's mission for his sheep. Jesus said, I have other sheep too there are n that are not in this sheepfold. I must bring them also. Now this is another thing for us to understand. You see, this is not just for us. We are to be an inviting community. Jesus doesn't just welcome the sheep that come to him. He goes out to find the sheep that are lost. He, does, he just doesn't gather the sheep that are near. He reaches out to the sheep that are far, those that are lost. This is a mission of outreach, inclusion, and reconciliation. As his disciples, we too are called to be like him and show grace and love to others and bring them into this fold as well. Somewhere along the line, someone brought us into this fold. You were asked to come to church. You were shown about Christ through the love that they showed you. And that is what we are called to do as well. Now in our reading, we heard Jesus also say, They will listen to my voice and there will be one flock with one shepherd. Understand this. This is not a divided flock. This is a united flock. Yes, this might seem different than what we see in our world right now. But listen, the shepherd doesn't just lead the sheep, he unites the sheep. He, he doesn't just gather the sheep, he binds the sheep together. He doesn't just care for the sheep, he makes the sheep one. This is a unity of purpose, of mission, of identity. We all want to be seen. We are called to be brothers and sisters in Christ together, even with our differences. It's actually in our differences that we can grow stronger together, that we can hear each other out and then figure out what it is that voice that God is telling us and asking us to do for this community, the surrounding community, and throughout the world. We are called to be one. This is the essence of the phrase, one flock, one shepherd. It's about being of one heart and one mind, united in purpose and in love for Jesus. Now here's the thing. This unity that I'm talking about, it requires effort on our part. We need to listen to the shepherd's voice, follow his guidance, and love each other as he loves us. We need to put aside our differences and focus on what unites us as a church. Do you know what that is? It's our love for the shepherd and his love that he has for each and every one of us. Do you know the shepherd's vision for his flock, for us? Jesus said, there will be one flock with one shepherd. This is a vision. It's a glimpse into the future that the shepherd has planned for his sheep. It's a promise of unity, harmony, and peace. This vision is not just about the future. It's also about the present in the moment that we're living right now. It's about living in the light of this vision, striving for unity, working for harmony, and praying for peace and then following what his voice is saying. So as I close out this morning, let's take a moment to reflect 
and the love of our Good Shepherd. A love so deep, so wide, so high, and so long that it actually surpasses all knowledge. A love that led him to lay down his life for us, his sheep. A love that knows us intimately, that guides us faithfully, and that unites us as one flock under his tender care. Remember that we are just not any sheep. My brothers and sisters, we are his sheep. We are known by him, cared by him, and loved by him. There's nothing that can separate us from that love. No past mistakes, no wrong decisions. Nothing can separate us from his love. So as we go out into the world, let's carry this assurance in our hearts. The assurance of a love that never fails, that never gives up, that never runs out of us. The assurance of a shepherd who laid down his life for us and who continues to guide us with his rod and his staff. The assurance of a God who is for us, with us, and in us. Amen? Amen.
are <clears throat> joys or concerns this morning. Do we have any uh, joys or concerns we want to share this morning? Yes. There's a joy that uh, Fred's family will be celebrating on the 30th. Um, we will probably won't be present here next weekend, so I want to bring it up. Greg's dad, Donald Wilson, will be honored in an honor flight going out of Georgia on the 30th, and he'll be going, he'll be in attendance with Greg's sister, and he'll be, he'll be able to see uh, the monuments out there with Lynn Warfel that she was a CB Navy uh, reservist. Okay, and both of the names, please. Uh, Donald Wilson. Donald. And then his daughter, Janet, who's a retired Navy chief, will be attending with him. Okay, so prayers for Donald and Janet for safe travels as they um, go out there to be honored for Donald. So prayers for that. That's an excellent celebration. Sounds amazing. <coughs> yes. Yeah, I wanted to say that I have a prayer for my uh, son in law. He's having brain surgery. Third or fourth. Okay. Mike Patterson. Mike Patterson and brain surgery. And what's the date again? April. May third. May third. Third. Okay, coming up on that. Okay. All right. So first, for Mike, who is going to have some brain surgery on May third, coming up. Any others? I do also want to let you know. Um, Lee has uh, contacted uh, Ron and Church and. Let us know that um, Carol is in the hospice. So um, let's go ahead and add her to our prayers as well. <coughs> All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and go to prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, you've heard what's weighing upon each of our hearts this morning, Lord, as you care and love each of us separately, that you have this strong, amazing love for all of us, and we thank you for that, Lord. Lord, I ask that you help us understand how you answer our <coughs> prayers this morning. Let us put our faith and our trust in you. Lord, we ask for special prayers this morning for Carol as Hassus has been called in to be with Lee during this time, be with the family. We ask for continued prayers for those that are getting ready for surgeries, special prayers coming up for Mike as well for a surgery coming up at the beginning of May. Lord, just be with the doctors and the nurses and the staff and all the families that are going through these challenging times. Let them put their uh, faith and trust in you. Let those specialists use the gifts that has been given to them to be able to be shared with the world. Keep them steady and strong. Let their con concentration be amazing on these days. And Lord, I ask that you continue to watch over those that are here in our bulletin. Prayers for Landon and Bill. Prayers for Angela, who's now out of the hospital. Continued prayers as well. For Betty, Enoch, uh, Lord, I just had a visit with her just this past week with her and Chris, and Lord, just even just the smile that's still present on her face, and you can just see the joy of life that she, she has lived and stuff, and Lord, I just ask, ask that you be with her as she continues to move forward in life in a challenging time, be with the family as they go through this process as well. Continue prayers for Jim as is still recovering from surgery on his foot. He's getting around well. We see him here this morning, Lord, and we thank you for that. 
We also ask for prayers for those military people that are protecting us and giving us our freedom that we know here in this community, in this church, or through our connections here. So prayers for Cody, Andy, Laura, Tim, Steve, Mateo, Austin, Eric, and Nick. And Lord, we also want to also thank you for our joys. The joys of the celebrations that we get to enjoy. The celebrations of birthdays, celebrations of honoring people together. Lord, we ask for uh, safe travels for Donald and Janet as they get ready to take this trip, be with them. Remember the moments, remember the joys, and thank you for their service here to this country. Lord, I just ask that you continue to bless your church here. Let us unite together, be inviting to others, willing to serve, and Lord, just not be worried about ourselves, but instead live a life like you and try to help out in all the ways that we can. And I know, Lord, that that, that can be hard because I, I know we live in a world that we kind of seem to focus on ourselves, but let us instead be thankful for the blessings you give to each of us. Let us share it to the best of our ways to help others to be able to find about this love that you have for, uh, for them as well. So I ask that you continue to watch over us. And I thank you for allowing us to be here on this beautiful sunny morning, to be with my brothers and sisters, to be able to join in a prayer you taught your disciples so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we'll go ahead and take our offering.
present. He loves each and every one of us, and we have been called to live a life like him. So let us share grace, let us share love with all those that we come across. God bless and have a great week. Thank you.